What happened at a wedding that let you know the marriage was going to end in a divorce? Story 1. At a lavish wedding reception, the air was filled with laughter and clinking glasses as guests celebrated the union of a seemingly happy couple. The groom, standing tall and confident, took the microphone to deliver his much-anticipated speech. With a wide grin, he began, When I joined a dating agency, I never thought I'd be so lucky as to find my own personal cook, dishwasher, and washing machine. The room fell silent, a collective gasp echoing among the guests. The groom's words hung heavily in the air, a stark contrast to the joyous atmosphere. Oblivious to the growing tension, he continued, I mean, who wouldn't want a partner who takes care of all the chores, right? It's like hitting the jackpot. His bride, seated beside him, forced a smile her eyes narrowing ever so slightly. She knew something the groom clearly did not. Underneath her elegant exterior, she was a force to be reckoned with, a diva who expected nothing less than royal treatment. As the evening wore on, whispers circulated among the guests. Did he really just say that? One woman murmured to her friend. He has no idea what he's in for, another chuckled, shaking her head. The bride, now fully aware of the ripple effect her husband's words had caused, decided to take matters into her own hands. Rising gracefully from her seat, she took the microphone, her voice calm and steady. Thank you, darling, she began, casting a loving yet pointed glance at her husband. I'm flattered by your words, but let's set the record straight. In this marriage, we are equals. And just so you know, I expect you to share in all the household duties. The groom's face paled as he realized the gravity of his mistake. Laughter erupted from the guests, breaking the tension and turning the moment into a light-hearted lesson. Story 2. The grand hall was adorned with flowers and twinkling lights, the perfect setting for a wedding reception. Guests mingled, laughter echoed, and the newlyweds basked in the joy of their special day. The air was filled with celebration, but underneath the surface, tension simmered. The groom, beaming with happiness, had no inkling of the storm brewing. His new brother-in-law, already deep in his cups, was about to turn the joyous occasion into a nightmare. About four years earlier, during a drunken argument, this same brother-in-law had stabbed his sister in the leg. It was a dark chapter that everyone hoped to leave behind. But the scars, both physical and emotional, lingered. As the night wore on, the brother-in-law's intoxication reached its peak. He began to regale the guests with stories, his voice growing louder and more belligerent with each passing minute. The groom noticed but tried to ignore the brewing disturbance, focusing instead on his bride and their guests. But then, the brother-in-law's words took a dark turn. You know, he slurred, raising his glass high, I should have aimed higher. Should have stabbed her in the head instead of the leg. Gasps rippled through the crowd, and a heavy silence fell. The bride paled, her eyes wide with shock and hurt. The groom's expression darkened. Rage bubbled within him, fueled by the alcohol he had consumed. He couldn't believe the audacity, the cruelty of the man standing before him. His hands clenched into fists as he tried to control the fury rising within him. The final straw came when the brother-in-law laughed, a harsh grating sound that echoed through the hall. Something snapped in the groom. Without thinking, he grabbed the nearest object, the knife used to cut the wedding cake, and lunged at the brother-in-law. Pandemonium erupted. Guests screamed and scattered as the groom and his brother-in-law struggled. In the chaos, the knife found its mark. The brother-in-law fell to the ground, blood pooling around him. The groom stood over him, the reality of what he'd done sinking in. Security rushed in, followed by the police. The reception was abruptly ended, the hall now a crime scene. The bride, torn between her love for her new husband and the horror of what had just transpired, was inconsolable. She had dreamed of this day being the start of a beautiful new chapter, but it had turned into a nightmare. The groom was arrested and taken away, his wedding day ending in handcuffs. As the guests slowly filed out, murmuring in disbelief, the bride was left to grapple with the shattering events of the evening. Story 3. The night before the big day, the rehearsal dinner was supposed to be a joyous occasion. Friends and family gathered, sharing stories and toasts, celebrating the love between the soon-to-be-wed couple. But amid the laughter and clinking glasses, a somber note echoed through the evening. The groom's mother, her eyes red and swollen, sat at a corner table, dabbing at her tears with a handkerchief. He looks miserable, she whispered to anyone who would listen. And indeed, the groom, sitting stiffly beside his bride-to-be, wore an expression of quiet desperation that spoke volume. Everyone could see it. He was not a picture of happiness. The couple had been together for several years, their relationship marked by ups and downs that had taken a toll on both of them. The bride was known for her difficult temperament, often harsh and unyielding. The groom, gentle and accommodating, had borne the brunt of her outburst. Despite the obvious strain, they had decided to take the plunge into marriage, hoping that it would mark a new beginning. On the wedding day, the sun shone brightly, 
casting a warm glow over the venue. Guests filled the pews, murmuring with anticipation as the ceremony began. The bride, resplendent in her gown, walked down the aisle with a determined look in her eyes. The groom, though handsome in his suit, seemed distant, his mind a whirl of conflicting emotions. When it came time for the vows, the bride took a deep breath and began. I know I can be a pretty terrible person, she said, her voice trembling slightly. And I don't know why you've stuck around, but that's all going to change starting today. The guests shifted uncomfortably in their seats, exchanging uneasy glances. The groom's face remained impassive, his eyes fixed on a point somewhere beyond the altar. Story 4. It was supposed to be a perfect day, the kind of wedding that little girls dream about and families cherish. My sister, radiant in her white gown, looked like a vision of happiness as she walked down the aisle to marry the love of her life. The ceremony went off without a hitch, and the reception was in full swing with laughter, dancing, and heartfelt toasts. But as the night wore on, a dark cloud began to overshadow the festivities. My sister's new husband, who had been the life of the party, started acting strangely. He stumbled around, his words slurring more than the alcohol alone could account for. The once joyous occasion began to feel tense and uneasy. The tipping point came when an argument erupted between the newlyweds. My sister, tears streaming down her face, tried to reason with her husband, but he was too far gone to listen. He eventually passed out, leaving her standing there, devastated and embarrassed in front of their guests. Desperate to snap him out of it, she grabbed a bucket of ice water and threw it in his face. He jolted awake, dazed and confused, but the damage was done. The reception ended on a sour note, and my sister spent the night crying. Her dream wedding turned nightmare. The next day, her husband was still out of sorts. He complained of feeling off, more than just a typical hangover. Concerned, my sister insisted he see a doctor. Tests revealed a shocking truth. He had traces of rohypnol in his system. The revelation was like a bombshell. Someone had spiked his drink, turning what should have been a celebration into a fiasco. The investigation that followed uncovered an even more disturbing fact. His own brother had drugged him hoping to sabotage the wedding. The brother, fearing that the marriage would change their close friendship, had taken drastic measures to keep things the way they were. It was a betrayal that cut deep, severing family ties and leaving a wound that would take years to heal. Story 5. It was an unexpected request. The bride, a woman I barely knew, had somehow designated me to help decorate the reception hall before the wedding. Reluctantly, I agreed, thinking it might be a chance to be part of something special. When I arrived at the venue, her mother was already there, her demeanor tense and worried. She pulled me aside and whispered urgently, Please, make sure everything is perfect. If anything's out of place, the bride will be furious. She has very specific ideas, and if they're not met, there'll be hell to pay. I brushed off her concerns, attributing them to typical wedding day nerves. But as I worked, her mother's anxiety was palpable, casting a shadow over what should have been a joyful task. I made sure to follow the bride's instructions meticulously, hoping to avoid any potential conflict. During the reception, I tried to engage with the bride, thinking it would be nice to get to know her a bit. To my surprise, she barely acknowledged me, rolling her eyes dismissively. Her behavior was cold and unwelcoming, a stark contrast to the celebratory atmosphere around us. What struck me even more was that, throughout the wedding and reception, I never saw her look at the groom. There was no shared glance, no moment of connection. It was as if he didn't exist to her. Story 6. Holy cow. My cousin Jan's wedding was the prelude to a predictably dramatic divorce that everyone saw coming from the moment the engagement began. To give you a bit of context, this happened 15 years ago in the backwoods of North Carolina. Our family, just a generation or two removed from snake handling and church, has its share of quirks, thanks to a mix of inbreeding and good old redneck tenacity. A few highlights that come to mind. First, her fiancé proposed to her over the corpse of her father. Yes, you read that right. He was over at their house watching TV when Jan's dad collapsed and died right there on the floor. As they waited for emergency services, the boyfriend grabbed Jan's hands, pulled her to her feet, and asked her to marry him. He later said he didn't want her to get away. Then, a week after the funeral, he disappeared for a month. No one knew where he was or how to reach him. Adding to the madness, Jan's mother insisted that she get married within four months. She planned to move out of state with her new boyfriend to dodge bill collectors and wanted the wedding out of the way. When the fiancé finally resurfaced, he was acting strange and evasive. It eventually came out that he'd been living with his ex-girlfriend. She demanded a month of his life, or she would take him to court for child support, which he hadn't been paying for their infant son. Despite all of this, Jan was determined to marry him. My mother and I took on most of the wedding preparations and arrangements, because Jan's mom, despite insisting on the rush timeline, didn't contribute a dime. We were pretty convinced the wedding would be called off at any moment, but the day arrived, and so did all the key players. At the wedding itself, the groom walked around drinking PBR out of a massive travel thermos with a novelty straw. 
telling anyone who would listen that Jan was a good starter wife. Jan threw several tantrums about trivial matters, including one where she accused the groom of stealing her drink. He called her a dumb worker, but the crisis was averted when she found her drink. During the reception, the groom pulled the ring off Jan's finger and swallowed it as a joke. The groom picked a fight with his father because his dad had asked the ex-girlfriend to stay home but the groom had really wanted her there. Jan had no idea about the invitation until the fight broke out. Story 7. It was a beautiful day for a wedding, the kind of day where everything seems picture perfect. Friends and family gathered in the quaint chapel, eagerly awaiting the moment when the bride and groom would exchange their vows. The atmosphere was filled with excitement and anticipation. As the ceremony began, the priest stood before the couple, ready to guide them through their vows. When he turned to the bride and began the traditional question, do you take this man to be your... Something unexpected happened. The bride started laughing uncontrollably. At first it was endearing, a sweet moment that made everyone smile. But as the seconds ticked by, her laughter didn't stop. It grew louder and more hysterical, echoing through the chapel. What began as a charming giggle quickly became uncomfortable. The guests shifted in their seats, exchanging uneasy glances. The groom stood awkwardly, a forced smile plastered on his face, unsure of how to react. The priest, taken aback, paused and waited for the laughter to subside, but it seemed the bride couldn't regain her composure. After what felt like an eternity, she managed to calm down enough for the ceremony to continue, but the moment had already cast a shadow over the proceeding. The rest of the vows were exchanged without incident, but the laughter lingered in everyone's minds, a reminder that something was amiss. Story 8. The wedding day had been a spectacular event, filled with love, laughter, and a bit too much alcohol. As the night wore on, the reception turned into a lively party, with guests dancing and toasting to the newlyweds. The groom, in particular, seemed to be having the time of his life, indulging in drink after drink. As the clock ticked past midnight, the groom's celebratory spirit turned into a drunken stupor. Staggering and slurring his words, he eventually decided to retreat to the honeymoon suite. In his inebriated state, he managed to latch the door from the inside, effectively locking himself in and everyone else out. Meanwhile, the bride was still downstairs, bidding farewell to the last of the guests and enjoying the final moments of her special day. When she finally made her way to the suite, eager to start her married life, she found the door locked tight. She knocked softly at first, then with increasing urgency, but there was no response. Frustration quickly turned to anger as she realized her new husband had passed out and locked her out. At 3 a.m., the scene in the hallway was far from the romantic beginning she had envisioned. She kicked the door and hollered at the top of her lungs, her voice echoing down the deserted hotel corridor. The image of the bride, in her pristine wedding dress, pounding on the door while shouting at her unconscious husband inside, was a stark and disheartening sight. The guests who had rooms nearby peeked out, whispering amongst themselves, the magical day now marred by this embarrassing spectacle. Eventually, hotel staff were summoned to help, but the damage to the bride's spirits was already done. She spent the night in a guest room, alone and seething with disappointment. Story 9. I was working at a wedding factory a place where weddings were scheduled back-to-back -back with little time to catch a breath between events. It was a busy and sometimes chaotic job, but nothing compared to what happened with one particular wedding. On Monday, we received a call informing us that the wedding scheduled for Saturday was canceled. It wasn't uncommon for plans to change, but this was a big deal. The couple was told they would forfeit their deposit of around $7,000 if they canceled at such short notice. Understandably, they weren't happy about it, but that seemed to be the end of it. Then, on Thursday, we got another call. The wedding was back on. This sudden reversal threw us into a frenzy, scrambling to get everything prepared in time. When Saturday arrived, the guests started to trickle in, and it was immediately clear that something was off. Everyone looked annoyed and bewildered. Apparently, the couple had informed their guests that the wedding was off, only to tell them two days later that it was back on. Understandably, people were frustrated and confused by the flip-flop. The ceremony itself was bizarrely short, lasting no more than three minutes. There was no fanfare, no elaborate vows, just a quick exchange of rings and a pronouncement. Then, in an unexpected twist, the bride changed out of her wedding dress and into sweatpants right after the ceremony. The guests, already on edge, shifted from annoyance to outright anger. They began drinking heavily, and the atmosphere quickly devolved into a drunken, chaotic mess. As I watched the scene unfold, I couldn't help but think, well, this won't last long. The entire event felt like a ticking time bomb, waiting to explode. My suspicions were confirmed sooner than I expected. The following Monday, the bride walked into my then-wife's divorce attorney's office. The marriage had lasted barely a weekend. The attorney, familiar with the revolving door of clients, later shared that the bride had already decided to end the marriage before the wedding even took place, 
but had gone through with it because of the pressure and the money involved. The whole experience became a legendary tale among the staff at the wedding factory. It served as a stark reminder of how not to handle a wedding or a marriage. The couple's inability to make firm decisions and communicate effectively not only ruined their special day, but also left their guests angry and bewildered. Story 10. Our friend had meticulously planned her wedding for over a year, pouring her heart and soul into every detail. She and her fiancé had taken six months of dance lessons to ensure their first dance would be perfect. She spent countless hours perfecting her appearance and making sure her bridesmaids, including my wife, looked stunning. As the wedding night unfolded, everything seemed to be going according to plan. The ceremony was beautiful, the decorations exquisite, and the atmosphere filled with joy. However, as the evening progressed, things took a troubling turn. The groom reunited with his old friends and began drinking heavily. What started as celebratory drinks quickly escalated to blackout drunkenness. By the time he was thoroughly intoxicated, he couldn't even recognize us, shoving us aside in his desperate rush to the bathroom. The groom's drunken state was disappointing, but the worst was yet to come. The much-anticipated first dance, which our friend had worked so hard to perfect, turned into a disaster. As they stepped onto the dance floor, it became painfully clear that the groom had no idea what he was doing. He stumbled clumsily, and our friend's face was a mask of panic and disappointment. The dream dance she had envisioned crumbled into a heartbreaking spectacle. Watching her struggle to keep the dance going while the groom flailed around aimlessly was agonizing. It was a moment that should have been magical, but instead it was marred by his irresponsible behavior. I remember thinking, this won't last six months. But to my surprise, they managed to stay together for three years. Story 11. It was my cousin's wedding, an event that everyone had looked forward to with great anticipation. The preparations had been meticulous, and the day seemed set for a beautiful celebration. However, an unexpected guest cast a dark cloud over the festivities. The groom had invited his ex-girlfriend to the wedding. She was also the mother of his one-year-old son, a fact that made the situation even more complicated. My cousin, who had been dating the groom for over two years and was very pregnant herself, was understandably upset by the presence of his ex. Tensions simmered throughout the day, but the breaking point came in the most unexpected place, the bathroom. My cousin and the groom got into a loud, heated argument, their voices echoing off the tiled walls. The confrontation was intense, filled with accusations and hurt feelings. Guests nearby could hear the shouting, making the atmosphere even more uncomfortable. Eventually, they emerged from the bathroom, but the damage was done. My cousin's eyes were red and puffy from crying, a stark contrast to the joy and excitement that should have marked her wedding day. Every wedding photo captured that day showed her tear-streaked face, a visual reminder of the turmoil that had overshadowed their celebration. Story 12. They went all out, spending a whopping $50,000 on a lavish Disney wedding. Every detail was meticulously planned, from the fairy tale castle backdrop to the horse-drawn carriage. It was supposed to be a dream come true, a magical beginning to their happily ever after. However, things took an unexpected turn as the day unfolded. The bride, caught up in the excitement and the grandeur of the event, spent zero time with her new in-laws. For several hours, she was nowhere to be seen near them, focusing instead on mingling with her friends and basking in the Disney magic. The in-laws, feeling neglected and slighted, tried to make the best of the situation, but their disappointment was palpable. The groom, caught in the middle, did his best to bridge the gap, but it was clear that the bride's priorities lay elsewhere. Just a week after the extravagant celebration, the bride ran off. The news spread like wildfire, leaving everyone stunned and confused. The in-laws, who had already felt sidelined at the wedding, were now grappling with the abrupt and painful end of the marriage. Story 13. I work in audio-visual for social events, so I've seen my fair share of weddings and engagement parties. One particular engagement party stands out vividly in my memory, thanks to an unforgettable moment that left everyone talking. The night was in full swing, with guests dancing and enjoying themselves. The soon-to-be groom, feeling particularly macho, decided to showcase his strength and playful dominance by picking up his bride-to-be. He intended to carry her off, perhaps to make a grand romantic gesture or simply to show everyone that he could have his way with her. However, Things didn't go as planned. As he lifted her off the ground, the bride-to-be started screaming, Put me down! Her tone was not playful but angry and insistent. He hesitated but continued to carry her for a few more steps, likely thinking she would find it funny or romantic eventually, but she didn't. Her screams grew louder and more furious. Finally, realizing he had misjudged the situation, he put her down. What happened next was both shocking and memorable. The moment her feet touched the ground, she slapped him hard across the face, the sound echoing over the music. I'm not done dancing, she yelled, her voice cutting through the stunned silence that had fallen over the crowd. Everyone around them froze, unsure how to react. Some guests exchanged awkward glances, 
while others tried to stifle their laughter. The groom-to-be stood there, red-faced and embarrassed, clearly having learned a lesson about his bride's independence and love for dancing. The party continued, albeit with a slightly awkward atmosphere. The bride resumed her dancing, unfazed by the spectacle that had just unfolded. The groom, meanwhile, spent the rest of the evening trying to smooth things over, apologizing profusely, and attempting to regain his composure. Story 14. I was reunited with a family member just before her wedding. We decided to go out drinking to catch up and celebrate. During our night out, she proudly pointed out a guy at the bar, boasting about how she had just gone on a trip with him and had a week-long pre-wedding fling. She seemed to think I'd find it naughty and funny, but I just felt bad for her future husband. I hoped it was just a bad decision made in the heat of the moment. The day of the wedding, I went to see her in the bridal suite to offer my support. To my shock, the same guy from the bar was there with her. She had hooked up with him the night before her wedding. The gravity of her actions hit me hard, and I couldn't shake the feeling of dread for what was to come. Despite the rocky start, the wedding proceeded as planned. The ceremony was beautiful, the reception lively, and the couple seemed happy, at least on the surface. But beneath the smiles and festivities, there was an undercurrent of tension and unresolved issues. They managed to stay together for a few years, but it was a miserable time for both of them. The trust between them was fragile, constantly tested by the shadows of her infidelity. Arguments and misunderstandings became a regular part of their life, eroding the foundation of their relationship. Story 15. My cousin married a nice, respectable girl from Connecticut. However, he embodied every negative stereotype of a not-so-nice, not-so-respectable guy from Norfolk County, Massachusetts. The night before the wedding, he got absolutely hammered with his friends, a bunch of rowdy characters named Mickeys and Sullys. When I saw him the morning of the wedding for photos, he was still in rough shape, sucking on a pint of Skull Vodka before chucking it into the corner of the church and hurling an offensive slur at his friend. He had the same obnoxious grin in every picture. We pumped some coffee into him, thinking we had it under control. But during the ceremony, he managed to flip off the guests twice. To top it off, his brother had taped Help Me on the bottom of his shoes, visible when they knelt for the mass. The bride's father was furious. The reception was even worse. My mom didn't want to attend, and I wish we hadn't. My cousin and his friends continued their drinking spree. The bride, bless her heart, tried to go ahead with their first dance to stand by me. My cousin didn't put down his drink, groped her inappropriately during the dance, and eventually spilled his drink all over her dress. She slapped him. He shoved her in return. The father of the groom charged the dance floor, and chaos ensued. Guests cleared the benches, and my brother and I asked mom if she wanted us to intervene. She grabbed her purse and said, Let's leave. As we were about to go, she walked over, slapped my cousin, and said, Thank God your grandmother passed away, you disgraceful little mick. My mom is normally a very quiet woman. We grabbed her and hurried out. Two cops passed us on their way in. The annulment process began one week later. I haven't spoken to my cousin since, though he emailed me once asking to borrow $5,000. From what I hear, he's now living in a camper. Story 16. Towards the end of the reception, the bride suggested that I, the groom, run home to change into street clothes so we could clean the venue and ensure we got our deposit back. Trusting her, I left and quickly changed. When I returned, I was shocked to find that she had opened all the gift envelopes. She had taken the cash they contained and used it to pay back relative. My wedding day, which should have been a celebration of our new life together, turned into a bewildering and disheartening experience. As I looked around at the opened envelopes and the missing cash, a wave of disappointment washed over me. What was meant to be a joyous occasion had suddenly been marred by this unexpected and troubling turn of event. It was clear that our priorities and values were not aligned, and this realization hit me hard on what was supposed to be the happiest day of my life. Story 17. My cousin's casual hookup resulted in a pregnancy, and somehow, they concluded that they needed to get married. Instead of opting for a quiet, low-key ceremony, they decided to go all out with a gigantic, expensive wedding. We're talking a five-course meal, over 300 guests, and 12 bridesmaids kind of wedding. Given the time it took to plan such an elaborate event, she was about seven months pregnant by the time the wedding day arrived. Now, there's nothing wrong with walking down the aisle while expecting, but she chose a corseted dress that was cinched so tightly it nearly flattened her bump. As someone who has been pregnant, I can't imagine how uncomfortable that must have been. The fact that they had only known each other for eight months, with her being seven months pregnant, was like the elephant in the room throughout the entire wedding. She refused to acknowledge her pregnancy in any way. She had been out of college for over 10 years, yet she invited all her sorority sisters to the wedding. During the reception, they all got up and sang a weird sorority song together. It felt odd and out of place for a woman in her 30s, almost as if she was trying to relive her youth. Story 18. A bit different, but here's my story. My wife and I had been married for less than a year when a mutual friend of ours got married. During his ceremony, I noticed my wife was crying, 
Expecting her to say something along the lines of being happy for our friend, I asked her why she was so emotional. Her response took me by surprise. She said, I always thought I would be the one to marry him. Her words hit me hard. A confession I hadn't anticipated. That revelation marked the beginning of the end for us. Not long after, she ended up cheating on me with that very friend. The betrayal was too much to bear, and we eventually went our separate ways. What I thought was just another wedding turned into a pivotal moment that exposed the cracks in our own marriage and led to its ultimate dissolution. Story 19. They only got married because they had unprotected sex on their first date and conceived a child. The whirlwind romance was driven more by obligation than love, and now they're grappling with the consequences of their hasty decision. As the months passed, the cracks in their relationship became more and more apparent. Fast forward to the wedding preparations, and the bride throws a fit over the idea of getting flowers from one of the groom's friends. This friend happens to be gay, and she has a strong religious objection to what she calls the gay lifestyle. This revelation shocks the groom to his core. He had no idea his bride held such extreme views. To make matters worse, she's also incredibly judgmental about other aspects of life. It's like he's suddenly seeing a whole new person, and he doesn't like what he sees. As they argue about the flowers, it becomes clear that her objections aren't just limited to this one friend. She disapproves of most of his social circle, which includes people from various walks of life, all of whom he's close to and respects deeply. Her intolerance and narrow-mindedness are a stark contrast to his open and accepting nature. The groom starts to realize just how incompatible they are. With the baby on the way, the tension between them reaches a boiling point. Every conversation turns into a fight, and the atmosphere is thick with resentment. The groom finds himself questioning every decision that led to this point. He's appalled by her inability to accept people for who they are, and it's clear that their values clash on a fundamental level. The baby hasn't even been born yet, and already the specter of divorce looms large over their lives. The groom can't fathom raising a child in such a toxic environment where intolerance and judgment are the norms. He's determined to provide a better example for his future child, one of love and acceptance, not hatred and bigotry. As the wedding day approaches, the groom feels a growing sense of dread. He knows in his heart that marrying her was a mistake, driven by circumstances rather than true love. The joyous occasion they had hoped for is now overshadowed by conflict and doubt. He starts seeking advice from friends and family, trying to find a way to navigate this mess he's found himself in. Story 20. Not all of it happened at the wedding, but the drama certainly started before it. On our way to our honeymoon, we were on a flight with this couple sitting behind us. The bride-to-be boarded the plane with a giant carry-on and a garment bag with her dress in it. As soon as they found their seats, she shoved her bags at her fiancé, ordering him to stow them away while she disappeared into the lavatory for a good 15 minutes. From the get-go, she was nasty and demanding, treating him like an unpaid servant. Fast forward to our arrival at the resort, we saw the same couple again. She was super stuck up, sneering at every female she came across and treating the staff like they were beneath her. The worst part was during one of the resort's dance night themed events. She was grinding on four or five different guys, clearly enjoying herself, while her husband-to-be sat alone at the bar, nursing his drink and looking utterly defeated. Then came the day of their wedding. My husband ran into the groom sitting alone outside at the cafe with a drink in his hand. He looked like a man on the edge. My husband, trying to be friendly, sat down to chat. The groom poured out his soul, explaining that they had no friends or family at the wedding because nobody who knew him liked her or approved of their union. He wasn't even sure what he was doing there. My husband, thinking it was just a case of cold feet, told him to have a drink to calm his nerves. The groom, with a haunted look, replied that it was his fifth drink already, and it was only 11 a.m. Our oceanfront villa provided a perfect view of the wedding, which was held right outside our back door. As the ceremony started, the groom looked like he was ready to bolt at any moment. It was clear that he was deeply troubled, possibly realizing too late the mistake he was about to make. The bride, on the other hand, seemed unfazed, almost as if trapping him on this remote island had been her plan all along. As the ceremony proceeded, the tension was palpable. The groom's hesitance was written all over his face, and he kept glancing around as if looking for an escape route. But with no friends or family there to support him and the isolation of the island resort, he was cornered. The bride, sensing victory, had a smug look that only seemed to deepen his despair. After the vows were exchanged and the ceremony concluded, the newlyweds were congratulated by the few strangers who had watched from a distance. The groom's eyes were glassy from the alcohol and the weight of his decision. The bride, however, basked in the attention, completely oblivious to, or perhaps uncaring about, her new husband's obvious distress. The rest of the trip, we saw them around the resort a few times. The dynamic between them didn't change. She continued to be domineering and critical, while he retreated further into himself, often seen with a drink in hand, staring out at the ocean as if searching for a way out. My husband and I couldn't help but feel a mixture of pity and frustration. 
It was clear to us that this marriage was doomed from the start, and we wondered how long it would take before the groom found the strength to leave, or whether he would be trapped in this toxic relationship indefinitely. Story 21. Her vows were the beginning of the end. They were friends of mine who had been dating for nearly two years before tying the knot. It was clear to all of us that he loved her more than she loved him. Our group of friends often speculated that she had only said yes to his proposal out of a sense of obligation rather than genuine desire. The wedding day arrived, and it was a beautiful affair. He stood at the altar, eyes brimming with tears of joy, ready to pour his heart out. His vows were an emotional soliloquy, a testament to his unwavering love and commitment. He spoke passionately about loving her for the rest of his life, painting a picture of a future filled with shared dreams and unending affection. His words moved many to tears showcasing just how deeply he adored her. Then it was her turn. She began her vows with, 438 days. That's how long I've loved you. At first it seemed sweet, a precise measurement of her affection. But then she ended with, and I promise to love you for at least 438 more. The phrasing struck me as odd, like a countdown rather than a declaration of lifelong love. I voiced my concern to a few friends, suggesting it was a subconscious sign that she wasn't in it for the long haul. They laughed it off, calling me a banana for reading too much into it but I couldn't shake the feeling that her words had a hidden meaning. Life went on, and they settled into married life. From the outside, everything seemed normal, but I couldn't help but notice the subtle signs of detachment on her part. While he continued to shower her with love and affection, she seemed distant, almost going through the motions rather than genuinely reciprocating his feelings. Exactly 438 days after the wedding, my phone buzzed with a message that made my heart sink. He had come home to find a note from her, cold and precise. It read, I kept my vow to love you for 438 days more, but I can't for a single day more. The devastating clarity of her words left no room for doubt. She had planned her exit all along. I called it. My friends, who had once dismissed my concerns, were now silent, grappling with the harsh reality of the situation. It was a cruel twist of fate, but it confirmed what I had feared all along. She was never fully committed. She had set a timer on their love, counting down the days until she could make her escape. Story 22. Not a wedding but a proposal story that still boggles my mind to this day. One of my good friends from high school, let's call her Sarah, went through a whirlwind of an engagement when she was just 20 years old. The guy, Mike, was 21. Now, Mike wasn't exactly the most traditional or thoughtful guy, but what he did was still shocking. One day, out of the blue, Mike changes his Facebook status to engaged and tags Sarah with the caption, Sarah's name, what do you think? That was it. No ring, no romantic gesture, just a casual post on social media. Sarah, thinking it was a joke, responded with a casual, sure, on Facebook. To her surprise, Mike took it seriously and started telling everyone they were engaged. The engagement lasted about a month. Curious about the whole situation, I asked Sarah about it later. She told me she initially thought it was a joke. When she realized Mike was serious about marriage, she thought maybe he was just testing the waters and that a real heartfelt proposal would follow. But no, that was it. That Facebook post was the proposal. As if that wasn't bad enough, Mike started trying to plan the wedding. When Sarah pointed out that he hadn't even officially proposed yet, he brushed it off as if the Facebook post was enough. No ring, no down-on-one-knee moment. Nothing. She was bewildered. Sarah tried to give him the benefit of the doubt, thinking maybe he was just clueless about how proposals usually go. But the more she thought about it, the more it didn't sit right with her. Finally, she confronted him about the whole situation. Mike's response was baffling. He said, If we aren't going to be engaged, then I don't see a point in staying together. It was like the engagement was some sort of all-or-nothing deal for him. He didn't understand why she was upset about the lack of a proper proposal or a ring. To him, the Facebook post was enough commitment. Sarah was really broken up about it. She had genuinely liked Mike and thought they had a future together. But the way he handled the proposal and his reaction to her concerns made her realize that he wasn't the right person for her. It was a tough pill to swallow, but in the end, she knew she had dodged a bullet. Story 23. He didn't look me in the eyes during the entire ceremony. It was like I wasn't even there. Instead, he stared at the preacher the whole time, his eyes locked in a trance. When it came time to kiss the bride, he gave me a perfunctory kiss on the hand. It was so mechanical and devoid of emotion that it made my heart sink. But that wasn't the worst of it. He never mentioned that his father was a pervert who openly expressed his desire to pound me. To him, it was normal and okay for his dad to think and talk like that about me. I found out only later, and the revelation was like a punch to the gut. How could he think that was acceptable? I didn't expect this post to gain so much attention, but I appreciate all the comments and questions. Earlier today, I was having a really poor day, 
but recalling this crazy chapter of my life has given me a few laughs and reminded me of how far I've come and how great my life is now. It's amazing to look back and see the contrast between then and now. To give you a bit more context, I should explain a few more details about that day. The ceremony itself was a small, intimate affair, which only made his distant behavior more glaring. Our friends and family were all there, but it felt like I was standing alone at the altar. Even during the vows, his words were flat, lacking the warmth and love you'd expect on such an important day. It was as if he was going through the motions without any genuine feeling. After the ceremony, things didn't improve. At the reception, his father made several inappropriate comments that left me feeling uncomfortable and violated. When I confronted my new husband about it, hoping he'd understand and support me, he brushed it off as if it were no big deal. That's just how he is, he said with a shrug, as if that excused everything. The honeymoon was no better. We barely spent any time together. He was always distracted, always somewhere else mentally. The few times we did talk, it was clear that he was uninterested and detached. The reality of what I had gotten myself into began to sink in, and it was a heavy, oppressive feeling. Story 24. The wedding was a spectacle from the start. The bride-to-be turned up 30 minutes late, arriving in a state of utter despair, inconsolably sobbing as she was helped down the aisle. The ceremony was surreal, punctuated by the bride's intermittent cries. Everyone present was baffled, exchanging worried glances as the scene unfolded. After the ceremony, I spoke to the bride's father and asked how things were. His response was cryptic yet telling. Well, that was like getting a cat in a paper bag. Three months later, the inevitable happened. They divorced. The backstory, as it turned out, was a tale of misguided motives and family pressure. The groom, whom we knew well, came from a wealthy family. Seeing dollar signs, the bride's family had persuaded their darling daughter to marry him. They were blinded by the promise of wealth, pushing her into a commitment she wasn't ready for and didn't want. The bride eventually realized the mistake. Despite his family's wealth, the groom himself was young and had nothing to his name. Her family's dreams of riches were shattered when they discovered there was no immediate fortune to be gained. In the end, she walked away with nothing but the bitter lesson learned from a union built on false pretenses. Story 25. The groom, groomsman, groom's friends, groom's father, and pretty much every male at the wedding kept making these so-called jokes about marriage. The whole event was filled with comments about being tied down, having a nagging wife, the end of being single, and the inability to flirt with other women. It was like a bad comedy routine that never ended, and it soured the atmosphere. Every toast, every conversation, seemed to circle back to how awful they thought marriage was. This is something I will never understand. If marriage sounds that dreadful to you, why even get married? The day started off with promise. The bride was radiant, the decorations were beautiful, and the setting was perfect. But from the moment the groom and his entourage arrived, the tone shifted. Instead of celebratory, it felt more like a wake for his single life. The groomsmen's speeches were peppered with jokes about the old ball and chain and the supposed miseries of married life. The groom himself laughed along, but it was hard to tell if he found it funny or if he was just playing along. During the ceremony, the groom's father gave a speech that was particularly cringeworthy. He reminisced about his own marriage in a way that made it sound like a life sentence. Well, son, he said, welcome to the club. Kiss your freedom goodbye. He followed this with a laugh, but it felt forced and uncomfortable. The bride's family looked on in stunned silence, clearly taken aback by the negativity. After the ceremony, at the reception, the groom's friends continued the theme. One after another, they got up to toast him with variations of the same theme. His life was over. They joked about how he'd be nagged for the rest of his life, how he'd have to check in with the wife before making any plans, and how his days of carefree fun were behind him. It was bewildering. Here we were, supposed to be celebrating the union of two people in love, and instead, it felt like we were mourning the groom's happiness. The bride's discomfort was palpable. She tried to laugh it off, but her forced smiles betrayed her feeling. She had planned for this day to be the happiest of her life, Yet she was surrounded by a chorus of men who seemed intent on making it a joke. Her friends tried to reassure her, but it was clear that the damage was done. I kept wondering, if these men truly believed marriage was such a horrible fate, why did they all go through with it? What was the point of all the negativity? Was it just societal pressure, or did they genuinely regret their choice? Either way, their attitude cast a dark shadow over what should have been a joyous occasion. The bride's father eventually took the microphone and gave a heartfelt speech about love, commitment, and the beauty of marriage. His words were a stark contrast to the doom and gloom that had preceded them. He spoke about the importance of mutual respect, understanding, and growing together. It was a breath of fresh air and a much-needed reminder of what the day was supposed to be about. Story 26. This story might be late, but it's too wild not to share. I work in hotels, and I see about a wedding a week. The craziest one I've ever witnessed involved the groom dropping an absolute bombshell on everyone. The day started like any other wedding. 
The venue was beautifully decorated, guests were mingling and sipping on champagne, and the air was filled with excitement and anticipation. The bride looked stunning in her gown, and the groom seemed composed, though with a slight edge of nervousness that I chalked up to pre-wedding jitters. The ceremony went off without a hitch. Vows were exchanged, rings were slipped onto fingers, and the couple sealed their promises with a kiss. It was picture perfect, but the real fireworks were saved for the reception. After dinner, it was time for the speeches. The best man, a close friend of the groom, took the microphone and gave a heartfelt, if somewhat cliched, speech about friendship, love, and the journey ahead. Everyone applauded. Some people wiped away tears, and the mood was festive. Then the groom stood up, took the microphone, and everything changed. There was a tense silence as he began to speak, his voice steady but cold. I just wanted to let everyone know, he said, pausing for dramatic effect, that the bride has been flipping the best man. I've known for a while, but I wanted the bride's family to spend a ton of money on this wedding. The room erupted into chaos. Gasps, shouts, and stunned silence all mixed together as the groom dropped the mic and walked out, leaving the bride and best man standing there, faces frozen in horror and embarrassment. The bride's family was in shock, some of them shouting angrily, while others tried to process what had just happened. People started whispering, then talking louder, trying to piece together the bombshell that had just been dropped. The bride, tears streaming down her face, tried to follow the groom out, but he was already gone. The best man stood there, awkward and pale, looking like he wanted to disappear. The rest of the evening was a blur. Guests were either leaving in a hurry or staying to watch the drama unfold. Hotel staff tried to manage the chaos, but it was like trying to put out a fire with a water pistol. The bride's parents were livid, not just at the revelation, but at the realization of how much money they had poured into a wedding that was now in shambles. Story 27. I work night audit at a hotel that hosts a lot of weddings. Last weekend, there was a relatively small wedding that wrapped up around 11 p.m., which is pretty early compared to most weddings we get. The bride decided to call it a night and went to bed, while the groom headed out to keep the party going with some drinking. Fast forward to about 3 a.m., and the groom and the best man stumbled back to the front desk, looking a bit worse for wear. The groom told me his key wasn't working, and he couldn't get into his room. I remade the key for him, figuring it was just a typical case of a demagnetized card. I handed it over and said, if this doesn't work, your wife might have deadbolted the door from the inside. The groom, still slightly tipsy and a bit indignant, was adamant. She would never do such a thing, he insisted. With the new key in hand, he and the best man headed back upstairs, confident that the problem was solved. A few minutes later, they were back. The new key hadn't worked. The groom looked both puzzled and a bit panicked now. I accompanied them upstairs, wanting to see what was going on for myself. Sure enough, when we got to the room, the door was deadbolted from the inside. The groom knocked softly at first, then a bit louder, calling out his bride's name. There was no response. By now the situation was becoming a bit more awkward. The best man, sensing the groom's growing frustration, tried to keep things light with a joke, but it fell flat. The groom continued knocking and calling out, his tone shifting from annoyed to pleading. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, but was probably only a few minutes, the door creaked open. The bride stood there, looking both groggy and not at all surprised. She had indeed deadbolted the door, effectively locking her husband out on their wedding night. The groom looked at her, stunned. Why did you lock me out? He asked, his voice a mix of confusion and hurt. She sighed, clearly tired and a bit exasperated. You went out drinking and I didn't know when you'd be back, she said simply. I wanted to get some sleep. There was a moment of silence as the groom processed this. The best man awkwardly shifted his weight from one foot to the other, clearly feeling out of place. I decided to make myself scarce, heading back to the front desk, leaving the newlyweds to sort things out. Story 28. I actually saw it coming from the moment I got the wedding announcement. There were signs that something was off, but it wasn't until the bride started relying heavily on sweets to get through the day that my suspicions were confirmed. She always had a stash of candy with her, using it as a coping mechanism for the stress and uncertainty she was feeling. Six weeks into their marriage, she noticed an unusual amount of money missing from their joint bank account. Curious and concerned, she decided to investigate further. What she found was both shocking and heartbreaking. The groom had spent the money on candy and a hooker. That revelation was the final nail in the coffin for their already shaky relationship. It all started innocuously enough. The couple seemed happy enough at first glance, but those of us who knew them well could see the cracks forming even before they said, I do. The bride's growing dependence on sweets was a red flag. She had always enjoyed candy, but it became her constant companion, especially during the stressful wedding planning period. It was like she was trying to sweeten an inherently bitter situation. On their wedding day, she had an emergency stash of candy in her purse. Between the vows and the reception, she'd sneak a piece here and there, trying to calm her nerves. She put on a brave face, 
but you could see the underlying tension if you looked closely enough. Their honeymoon period was brief and turbulent. Arguments broke out over trivial matters, and there was a palpable sense of unease between them. The bride confided in a few close friends about her doubts and fears, but she tried to hold it together, hoping things would improve. Then came the discovery of the bank withdrawals. She had been meticulously managing their finances, trying to ensure they started their married life on solid ground. When she saw the significant amount of money missing, her heart sank. At first, she hoped it was a mistake or a one-time splurge, but the truth was far worse. After confronting the groom, he admitted to spending the money on candy and, shockingly, a hooker. The betrayal cut deep. Not only had he squandered their money, but he had also violated the trust that is supposed to be the foundation of a marriage. The bride was devastated. It wasn't just about the money, it was about what it represented, a complete disregard for their relationship and her feelings. The fallout was swift. The bride filed for divorce, unable to see a future with someone who had so blatantly disrespected her and their marriage. The groom, who initially seemed remorseful, quickly revealed his true colors by blaming her for the situation, further proving that her decision to leave was the right one. Story 29. I haven't read the thread yet, but I have to share this wedding story. I went to a wedding where the wife-to-be made it abundantly clear to the groom-to-be that she did not want the cake smashed in her face. She told him this at least 10,000 times in my presence before the wedding. It wasn't just a casual request, it was a firm boundary. She emphasized repeatedly that if he smashed the cake in her face, they would have serious problems. Fast forward to the reception. The ceremony itself was beautiful. A picture-perfect event with friends and family gathered to celebrate their union. The bride was glowing, and everything seemed to be going smoothly but the tension in the air was palpable as the cake cutting approached. Those of us who had heard her warnings were on edge, silently hoping the groom would respect her wishes. The moment came. They cut the cake, shared a sweet moment, and then to everyone's horror, the groom ignored her explicit wishes and smashed the cake in her face. The room fell silent. The bride stood there, stunned and covered in cake, her expression shifting from shock to pure anger. The groom, initially laughing, realized too late that he had made a huge mistake. The atmosphere turned icy. The bride wiped the cake from her face, her eyes narrowing at the groom. It was clear she wasn't going to let this slide. She didn't make a scene right then and there, but you could see the wheels turning in her head. The rest of the reception was awkward, with guests unsure of what to say or do, and the groom looking increasingly uncomfortable. Story 30. At this particular wedding, the mood was high, and everyone was in good spirits as the reception went on. The ceremony had been lovely, and now it was time for the fun part, the cake cutting. The bride and groom approached the cake, and everyone gathered around, phones ready to capture the moment. The bride, smiling mischievously, grabbed a piece of cake. Without any hesitation, she smashed it right into the groom's face. Everyone gasped. The groom's smile vanished, replaced by a look of shock and anger. He carefully placed the piece of cake he was holding back down, and without a word, walked quickly out of the building. The room fell silent. The DJ, caught off guard, tried to recover by awkwardly transitioning back to music and encouraging people to dance. But no one moved. Instead, clusters of guests stood around, whispering and speculating about what had just happened. The festive atmosphere had evaporated, replaced by a thick tension. A few minutes later, the bride followed him out, clearly distressed. The guests waited in awkward anticipation, unsure of what to do. After what felt like an eternity, but was probably just a few minutes, the couple returned. They tried to put on brave faces but the damage was done. The groom's expression was tight, and the bride's eyes were red-rimmed, as if she had been crying. They mingled a bit, but the joyful mood was gone, replaced by an uncomfortable awkwardness that hung in the air. The rest of the reception was a struggle. People attempted to dance and make small talk, but the incident had cast a shadow over the evening. The bride and groom put on a show of togetherness, but their interactions were stiff and strained. It was clear that what was meant to be a playful moment had struck a deep nerve. In the months that followed, it became apparent that the cake incident was a symptom of deeper issues. Friends and family noticed the tension between them growing. They struggled to communicate, and resentments festered. The groom, feeling disrespected and humiliated, found it hard to move past that moment. The bride, on the other hand, felt misunderstood and defensive. They tried to make it work, but their relationship had been fundamentally altered. The playful spirit they once shared seemed to vanish, replaced by a cautious wariness. The incident at the wedding became a defining moment, a marker of the beginning of the end. After a year of trying to hold on, they decided to get a divorce. It wasn't just about the cake. It was about what the cake incident represented, a lack of respect and understanding. The marriage, already fragile, couldn't withstand the strain of that moment and what it revealed about their relationship. Story 31. I was the groom in this one. It was a wedding where the signs were clear as day, but we went through with it anyway. The bride refused to kiss me no matter what. She'd reluctantly hold my hand for photos and in front of people, 
but the moment their backs were turned, she'd yank her hand away like it burned. It was awkward and humiliating. We divorced a month later. She remarried within a few months. The whole thing unraveled pretty quickly after that. Turns out it was an arranged marriage that our moms had forced on us. Neither of us really liked each other, but we went through with the wedding because we thought we had to. On our wedding day, I tried to keep up appearances, thinking maybe things would get better. But her coldness was impossible to ignore. During the ceremony, she barely made eye contact, and the kiss was more of a formality than a genuine moment of affection. The guests could sense something was off, but no one knew the full story. The reception was no better. Every time someone asked us to kiss for a photo or hold hands, she'd comply just long enough to get the picture taken, then immediately pull away. Her reluctance was evident to everyone, and it made the celebration feel hollow. A month into the marriage, we couldn't pretend anymore. The tension was unbearable. We sat down and had a frank conversation about our situation. She admitted that she had been in a relationship with someone else long before the wedding. She had felt trapped by our family's expectations and didn't see a way out. I felt a mixture of anger, sadness, and relief. Anger that she hadn't been honest with me sooner, sadness for the wasted effort and emotions, and relief that we were finally addressing the truth. Our families were initially shocked by the rapid dissolution of our marriage, but once the details came out, they understood. It was a bitter pill for our mothers, who had orchestrated the whole thing, to swallow. They had hoped for a successful match, but their meddling only led to heartache. In the end, the divorce was a mutual decision. We both realized that we deserved to be with people we actually loved. She quickly moved on and married her longtime partner, finally finding happiness on her own term. I took some time to heal and reflect on what had happened. The experience taught me a lot about the importance of genuine connections and the dangers of letting others dictate your life choice. It was a harsh lesson, but a necessary one. I eventually found someone who truly cared for me, someone I chose for myself, and we've been building a life together based on mutual respect and affection. Story 32. They reconnected on Facebook almost a decade after their first breakup. The nostalgia and rekindled feelings were enough to make her pack up her life and move across the country in the middle of the night without telling a soul. A few weeks later, they went to the courthouse and got married. It all seemed so spontaneous and romantic, like something out of a movie. But six months later, she moved back home without him or the U-Haul full of everything she owned. Pro tip. If you feel like you have to hide something from everyone you know because they will think it's a bad idea and try to talk you out of it, you're probably doing something really stupid. From the outside, their reunion looked like a fairy tale. Friends and family were shocked but curious when they heard about their whirlwind romance. They were high school sweethearts, and their story of reconnecting after so many years tugged at everyone's heartstrings. It was easy to get swept up in the romance of it all, but underneath the surface, there were cracks. She had left in the dead of night, avoiding any confrontation or advice from loved ones. She knew deep down that everyone would think it was a terrible idea, and she wasn't ready to face their skepticism. She wanted to believe in the fairy tale, to think that love could conquer all. Their life together started with a lot of promise. The first few weeks were filled with the excitement of being reunited, exploring their new life together, and reminiscing about old times. They talked about their future, made plans, and even shared their dreams of starting a family. But as the honeymoon phase faded, reality began to set in. The man she had moved across the country for was not the same person she had dated in high school. They had both changed over the years, and not all of those changes were compatible. Old habits and unresolved issues from their past started to resurface. They fought over little things that quickly escalated into bigger problems. The pressures of making a new life together in a place where she knew no one but him became overwhelming. She started to feel isolated and disconnected. The excitement that had initially fueled her decision began to wear off, replaced by a growing sense of regret. She missed her family and friends and the life she had abruptly left behind. The person she had once known so well now felt like a stranger. Six months in, she realized that she couldn't keep pretending everything was fine. The weight of her decisions and the isolation she felt were too much to bear. One day without warning, she packed a few essentials and took a flight back home, leaving everything else behind. The U-Haul filled with her belongings was a testament to the haste and impulsiveness of her choice. Returning home was bittersweet. She had to face the questions and judgments from those who had tried to warn her. There were apologies to be made and relationships to mend, but despite the embarrassment and the heartache, she felt a sense of relief. She was back where she belonged, surrounded by people who loved her. Story 33. We hadn't met the groom more than twice before the wedding. Our friend had moved out of state, so we didn't get to see her often. My husband is an artist, and she asked him to draw a picture of the two of them, a simple sketch to make copies of for kids to use as coloring sheets at the wedding. The few times we'd met the groom, he gave off an odd vibe, but I chalked it up to not knowing him well enough and being caught up in visiting with my friend. On the day we went to hand him the copies before the wedding, he was curt and emotionless. It felt like we were a nuisance rather than guests doing him a favor. As we were about to leave, it was like a switch flipped. 
He suddenly became gracious, thanking us for the picture and for making the trip. It was jarring, as if he remembered he needed to act like a human. A terrible feeling washed over me. But who stops a wedding and says, I don't know this guy, but he acted funny a minute ago, so stop the wedding. Within a few months of the wedding, our worst fears were confirmed. He became violent and threw her out of the house because her hair clogged the shower. When she came back to get her things, he had thrown them out in giant garbage bags labeled with derogatory terms like unpleasant and worker. It was a clear attempt to belittle and humiliate her. The situation quickly escalated. He bugged her car and began showing up at places he knew she would be, trying to intimidate her out of attending events or going to places she needed to be. He even made a scene at her office, causing her immense stress and fear. She was forced to change her name to escape his harassment and throw him off her scent. In a desperate moment, she ran into his parents right after he had thrown her out. She broke down and told them everything. They apologized, revealing that he had done this to a previous wife as well. They hadn't said anything because they hoped he had changed. It was a gut-wrenching realization that not only was the groom a sociopath, but his family had enabled his behavior by staying silent. This all happened a few years ago, and thankfully, she's doing great now. She's happy, healthy, and thriving. However, I worry she may never feel like she can be with someone again. The trauma she experienced was profound, and it's hard to rebuild trust after something like that. Story 34. My sister was a bridesmaid at a wedding where the groom decided that his wedding day would be the perfect time to revisit his cola habit. The whole event was beautiful, with everyone dressed to the nines and the venue decked out in lavish decorations. The ceremony went off without a hitch, and the reception was a lively affair with dancing, heartfelt toasts, and a lot of laughter. But things took a dark turn as the night wore on. The groom, who had a history with cola, thought it would be a good idea to indulge again, and not just a little. By the end of the night, he was visibly wired, his behavior becoming more erratic and alarming. The bride and bridesmaids, including my sister, tried to manage the situation as best as they could, but it was clear things were spiraling out of control. The next morning, everyone gathered for breakfast in the hotel lobby, trying to shake off the fatigue from the festivity. Suddenly, a commotion erupted. The groom was being wheeled out on a stretcher, unresponsive. Panic spread through the guests as they tried to understand what had happened. It turned out that he had overdosed and was found unconscious in their hotel room. The bride, already at her wit's end from the previous night's chaos, made a decisive move. She dumped him right there in the hospital. The marriage, which had barely started, was over in a mere 18 hours. The groom was left to deal with the fallout of his actions alone, while the bride walked away from the whole ordeal. In the aftermath, there was a lot of talk among the guests. One particularly controversial point was that the bride still cashed everyone's checks, even though her parents had footed the entire bill for the wedding. Some saw it as a necessary step to recoup some of the costs, while others viewed it as opportunistic. Regardless, it added another layer of drama to an already unbelievable story. This incident served as a stark reminder of how fragile some situations can be, and how past habits and poor decisions can resurface at the worst possible time. The bride, who had thought she was beginning a new chapter in her life, was instead thrust into an emotional and financial mess. Her quick decision to end the marriage was met with a mix of sympathy and criticism, but in the end, she did what she felt was best for her future. The groom's actions not only ruined what should have been the happiest day of their lives, but also exposed deeper issues that could have plagued their marriage long term. The bride's decisiveness in the face of such a disaster was commendable, even if it seemed harsh to some. She avoided what would likely have been a tumultuous and painful relationship. As for the checks, it's a reminder that weddings, for all their romantic ideals, are also significant financial investments. The bride's decision to cash them, despite her parents covering the costs, might have been a practical move to recover from the unexpected turn of events. It's one of those gray areas that people will debate, but unless you're in that situation, it's hard to judge. Story 35. 